So in this video, I'm going to talk about formatting and demonstrate how to use formatting. So I always start with the question, what is our subject matter, i.e. what is formatting? So formatting is a way of adding strings locked in variables slash arrays to a string or to another string. Another string. So I'm going to show you two ways to format and I'm just going to show you what this what I mean by this as well. The first way I'll show you is to use the dot format method because you can use it with older versions of Python. And the second way actually requires Python 3.6. So if you don't have Python 3.6, you won't be able to use the second way, but you'll probably still be able to use the first one. Not sure exactly when the first one was made. So let's say we have two strings. We got string one, and we'll say it's equal to a bunch of A's, right? And we've got string two, and we'll say it's equal to a bunch of B's, okay? Just arbitrary numbers, just to, just to kind of show you the concept, right? Let's say that we make a new string, okay? We'll just call it new string. Nothing fancy, just new string. Um, we want to add these existing strings to the new string. I mean, we could type this whole string out and the other whole string out and just put it in the new string as part of the string. But let's imagine now that string one is actually 15,000 characters long and string two is 25,000 characters long. It's going to take a very long time to uh, write all that. It might even take a long time to copy and paste it. And let's say that you're importing it from somewhere else, maybe a web page or something. You won't necessarily be able to copy and paste it so easily, right? So you would be better off actually using this variable and this variable and just importing the variable straight into the string, right? Because the string's already contained in a variable, we'll assume. Well, what you can do is you can say the first string is, and then we're just going to put these curly brackets here, right? I'm going to put a comma and a little space and say the second string is, we're going to have another curly bracket. And we're just going to have these two strings. That's the whole sentence is going to state what the first string name is and the second string name is. We'll have a full stop to end it. Then after the string, we use this uh, function, dot format, right? Now inside of these brackets, we put the name of the first string. So, or the first variable we want to use is going to be this variable. So it's going to be string one. So our first variable will be string one. And then our second variable will be inserted here. So that's going to be string two, right? I can do it backwards and demonstrate to you what I mean by this. So let's initialize that now. Let's print it out to see what happens. So we'll print new string. As you can see, the string in variable string one has been inserted here. And the uh, brackets have been just completely taken out. And string two has also been inserted here and the brackets are gone. So you can see in this instance, we've managed to format a string into an existing string, right? Without actually having to copy and paste the string or retype it out. As I say, with strings this size, you might as well just retype them out or copy and paste them, probably save you time. But like I said, if you had a very large string that would take some time to copy and paste or that, you know, would take a very long time to find within your code, but you remember the variable name, because you might have 10,000 lines of code you're looking through, you can just use the variable name like this. Now, these are filled out in order. So essentially you put a curly bracket and then you put your next curly bracket and each variable um, sort of pertains to 
the 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 order of the curly bracket the order of the variables will be the same as the order of the curly bracket so your first curly bracket um, will relate to your first variable and your second curly bracket will relate to your second variable if you got a third it'd be the third variable and so on and so forth so a way I'll demonstrate this is by just sort of making new string two and we'll reverse the order right and we'll say that the second string is and the first string is and we'll dot format all that because why not and the second string now is actually going to be string two but it's my first uh, curly bracket so string two will be the first variable argument because we're putting it in order and the first string which is string one will be the second curly bracket and therefore the second argument or the second parameter of the dot format function right let's initialize that and then let's print it so new string 2 will be printed and you can see it's worked the second string is correct the first string is correct great so now you've got a way to essentially format your strings you know add variables that are strings into existing strings i imagine you could probably you can add numbers well you can add numbers i don't imagine you actually can add numbers to the string the string will accept it fine so let's see how you would use a dictionary with this so i'm going to make a dictionary i'll just call it dict1 nice and simple nothing too imaginative here we'll say that the first dictionary uh, entry is name and we'll say that the name is Pedro Hernandez. And we'll say that the second dictionary entry is age. And that the age is 32. Okay. Now, we're going to make a third new string. We'll call it new string free. How inventive. And we're going to include all these items in the dictionary. Right, so we can actually, you know, we can just put these here, or we can put variable names, we can do what we want. So I'm going to say your name is, and then we're going to have a name, and your age is, and we're going to use dot .format here. Now, you can probably guess what I'm going to do. But let me just spoil it for you. So the first variable is going to be dict one name. So we're just going to get the value relating to name. Sorry, that has to be capitalized. The value relating to the name key of this dictionary dict one. That will be our first parameter or argument. And then the second one is, you've guessed it, dict one age. All right. And we'll get these values directly from the dictionary and I'll print them out. So print new string free and you should see that that's worked. Oh, not if I don't define a dictionary, it won't work. Let's just try it all again. And there you go. Your name is Pedro Hernandez and your age is 32. So that's worked there. So you can see this is a relatively simple way of formatting uh, strings you can also actually give these curly brackets names you can put names inside of them so we can say new string for is equal to well we can just put we'll, we'll copy the uh, the string your name is and here inside the curly bracket we can actually put you know a, an informal variable name essentially so we'll say name We'll say and your age is dot format right and all we got to do here to change this around is put the name is equal to dict one name and we can say the age is equal to dict one 
age. I personally wouldn't really do this. I wouldn't, you know, put a variable name in as such. Just my, just my personal opinion. I wouldn't be very interested in doing this. There's no real reason to. But you know, I'm just showing that it can be done essentially. Just in case for whatever reason you want to, or maybe for your implementation, it's just more convenient for you, right? So we got new string four. We'll print it out. And hey, presto, it's worked, right? We can also do this for lists, so we'll say we got list one. Once again, most inventive name ever. We'll say now we'll say uh, forty-five and six hundred and fifty, right? And these are going to be essentially amounts of animals. So we're going to have new string five, and we're going to say that it's equal to the amount of cows on the farm is and we're just going to use that and the amount of sheep uh, and sorry and there are da -da, sheep right and we're going to dot format that it's a bit over the line but it doesn't really matter I'm going to dot format that and we're just going to say that the first argument is equal to list one zero the second argument is list one one okay we can do this for any kind of data structure that can we can grab a value from just by using giving the value and passing it into the doc format part all right we can even just use raw oops not if we don't define it we can even just use raw numbers in fact so there we are we've got that now let's print new String five. And you can see that's worked. So this is one of the original ways of forming. There's actually another way that's a bit older, but I think everyone's Python is probably up to date with this way, so I won't go into it. So this is the one of the older methods to uh, format your strings essentially. And you can see that it works relatively well. Now there's another way that's I mean, I would say it's simpler, but some people would probably disagree with me. And it's just called F formatting, essentially, right? All you've got to do is you put your new string. So we're going to say new underscore string six is equal to the amount of. First, we need an F. Sorry, first, we need an F. Nearly forgot me. F. So we put an F in front of the string that we want to change. I'm going to say the amount of cows on the farm is, and in here, I'm just going to put list one zero, and it should just come up with 45. That's all I got to do. A bit simpler, I would say. I would say it's a bit simpler to use an F string, right? So we're going to print that new string just to confirm that it works because, you know, I mess up sometimes. I'm not uh, infallible. And you can see that it's worked here. Once again, you can use, you know, the dict. You can use, you can also use variable names. So, for example, we can say, we can, we can say that new string seven is equal to the first string is. And you can just put the variable name in. So string one. Right, and here at the start, I need to put F. Almost forgot. It's a very hard thing for the, to me to remember because actually, I've learned the first method. That's that's how I first learned to format. So this F is actually fairly new to me. You see, that's worked. So essentially, there's this kind of an advantage with F where you don't have to use dot format and list the variable names or the value names you can just put the values within these brackets here okay so it's a little bit simpler in that regard you can also make multi-line f statements so you can say new string 8 is equal to and then you just use parenthesis and you put your first f here and you say the first string is say string 1 
you want to put a space after this as well and I will say f the second string is string 2 okay quite simple don't need to put a space after this one you'll see why in a minute also print that out in a minute after I run it all and you can see when I do print it all out you can see that I can actually that I've actually got both of these strings one like this by putting it inside a parenthesis the whole thing inside a parenthesis so I can have hundreds of lines and do all this kind of formatting if I want however if I don't put the F in front of it it won't work it'll just give me an error so be aware of that one more thing that we can do with this kind of F formatting is we can actually manipulate the uh, variables themselves uh, within these brackets so for example let's say make one more new string we'll say new string 9 and we'll say f that the first string is string 1 and we're going to say dot upper so we can actually you know change the characters as we go within the bracket so if I use dot upper on that and I print new string 9, you'll be able to see that's all been converted to uppercase. Okay, so these are just the basics of formatting. There's far more to formatting. Well, not much more, but there's a bit more. You'll probably encounter some strange errors when you're trying to do weird things with dictionaries. You'll see that, you know, spacing is important, that cutting off uh, return parts because of line sizes, etc. is going to become important to you. But there's far too much to cover for me be, to be able to cover all of formatting. But this is just essentially the basics of it. And as I've said, if you are running on a Python version that's less than 3.6, I actually think the format, format might have come in 2.5 or 2.6 you probably aren't running on less than that if you are i would just upgrade your python instance honestly but anyways if you're not running on 3.6 if you're running on a version of python lower than 3.6 if you see i'm running on 3.7 you will want to use this dot format method it will be impossible to use the f method because it was introduced in 3.6 if you're in 3.6 i recommend using the f method just because, you know, as you can see, it's quite a lot simpler. You don't have to use dot .format. And remember, you, vary, you can just put your variables directly in without worrying about the order and all that kind of thing. So it's a bit handier. And you can also manipulate things as they come, you know. So it's, yeah, it's, it's just a bit handier. You've got multiple lines. T to me, you've got the best of everything with the F format. And you've got many features that you don't have with the dot .format. And there's... It's kind of less error prone that don't format. I won't go into that completely. But anyway, just to recap, formatting is a way of adding strings locked in variables or arrays to another string. You can also you can also add numbers, you know. You can see here that this number, this 32, you know, is added here. And you don't actually have to add, for example, like a raw a raw thing you can actually add a raw value when you're using dot format so you can say that the first value would be 99 the second would be a raw string you don't have to use a variable but i would argue that if you're just going to type it out after dot format you might as well put it in here so it's really only supposed to be used uh, with variables anyway that being said i hope you enjoyed and thanks for watching